With the population rising and too many kids being born, if only we could teach kids how annoying babies are and then our problem would be solved. So we need to teach kids how hard parenting is. And I think I've got a great solution. Looking back to the 90s for inspiration. Developed by Bandai and Wiz in the 90s, this hunk of plastic lets you look after an animal and try not to kill it. Sporting three buttons is the perfect way to teach your kid how to look after anything. Well, almost perfect. So if we buy one and add a couple more realistic features, we should have a solution to our overpopulation problem. $40? Alright, here's the design. Our little guy is split into two major components. The first is our little baby boy, who you just need to feed, clean up after, and exercise by pressing a few buttons. And the second is all the mechanisms that will make your life a living hell if you don't do those things. Okay, so we just need to order some components. Wait. But I don't want to wait seven years for my components to arrive from AliExpress. I want to build it now. It's time for a robbery. And these are our prototyping components while we wait for our parts to arrive. And all it costs was if I break it, I'm dead. And once we connect the wires, we use an API to send over data super easy. We just gotta store our images in bitmap form and tell the screen to light up each pixel. Wait a minute, I've never used an Arduino before. I don't know how any of this works. Well, let me try and explain it so that you think I know what I'm talking about. Basically, it's a microcontroller and they come in all different shapes and sizes, but they're generally a small device that can store and run our code. It's got all these little pins so we can send and receive signals and we write the code in our computer and send it over so it should be able to do whatever we want it to. Yeah, we kind of need to know how to code an Arduino, but that's what Stack Overflow is for, so we don't really need to learn it. It's also pretty small, so if we want to put it in our own casing, it shouldn't be too hard. Then we can start a whole production line and release this to the world. All right, here's the wiring diagram for the nerds interested. If you comment anything about it and say it's bad, I will not be impressed. If we just draw two faces and convert them to a bitmap, our screen should be able to show them. Easy peasy face on screeny. Well, it turns out we might need to make our small man a little bigger. A problem we've all had, am I right, guys? <laughs> And with the press of a button, we can make him angry or happy. And as a little test for text, we can make those emotions speak. Well, that's not very nice. Now we just need to bring him to life with a bunch of code. The way a normal Tamagotchi works is you look after them and make sure they don't die by maintaining a bunch of stats. After hatching it from an egg, you maintain its health, discipline, and give it food and play games. There's a whole bunch of lame activities. And so instead of doing that, we're just gonna have three variables that you can manage, all handled by three different buttons. We've got food, stink, and fitness. And after staring at the Arduino IDE for hours, have I mentioned this is the first time I've used an Arduino? Our little guy has come to life. Well, after fixing literally one number, our little guy is alive and he really doesn't want to be. This is how our little guy's smooth brain works. Every 30 seconds, he needs to eat some food, but if you feed him too much, he'll die. So every 30 seconds, he goes to the bathroom, but if the shit piles up too high, he'll die. And he also needs to stay fit. So every second, his fitness goes down, and if he has enough food in his tummy, you can press a button to make him do a push-up or something. So now that we've got a virtual pet, it's time to make it more realistic. The easiest part to integrate is a loud buzzer that'll make sure you know he needs something. We can just send an electric signal to a pin whenever we show the text that tells the user what they want. And now we have to add all the other ideas we have. Cause there are so many. Just just look at look at them all. No wonder it takes some creators so long to come out with videos. Coming up with ideas is kinda hard. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a couple things we could do. Like constantly ask questions and wait for audio feedback of some kind. But we don't have a microphone or a preamp, so we can't really do that. We could also add a motor so that it vibrates whenever you do exercise or whenever it wants something, but we don't have a motor controller. And we could add a little taser to shock the owner if it's sitting in its pocket and it's ignored. But fun fact, it's illegal to own a taser as a civilian in Australia. This is also my first time using a microcontroller and all of those things sound scary. But I'm not one to not try things. So first up, the vibrator. To try and raise some eyes in public while you're just trying to work your little guy out. 
If you just try to connect a motor to an Arduino, it won't work. The output voltage is just too low. And if we try to make a transistor an output for a switch, it also doesn't work. I literally followed this tutorial and it said it should, but for some reason it didn't. It has nothing to do with the fact I used the wrong diode or anything. Oh, and I kind of broke the motor as well. I've also bought a motor controller, so maybe later I'll implement it. And I've already written all the code for it, so if you want to try and make it yourself, you can find the GitHub link somewhere. Alright, final guy reveal. Here he is. Here's, here's the guy. If this video does well, I'll do a part 2 and actually implement more evil components. So comment, give me your ideas, and if you want to see me terribly remake Pac-Man, there's this video somewhere. It's pretty good. Enjoy.